Okay. Um, how long am I the chair for? I think it's just a um I I our bylaws don't I don't think designate terms for chair and chair elect. Um, but I think terms wise it's a three year term and you can re up twice, I believe. So you don't have to, but you can I think it's like up to six years you could potentially be the chair, but you don't have to be. You can okay. be flexible. All right. I'll the bylaws on that one for sure yeah usually annually you vote mm -hmm. um, yeah i just don't remember exactly what the bylaws mm -hmm. said i looked at them last week and it's now gone out of my head so but so we'll um and we'll probably look in december we'll probably send you guys like a little save the date thing for the spring meeting um since we only meet really twice a year mm -hmm. so um so we'll, we'll get that on your calendars in december um and then we're going to move right along into mm -hmm. updates. Um, would you like to go first with what what you've done as highlights or anything you'd like to highlight? Um, so since we met in the spring last, we've done um, a bunch of projects and classes and a variety of stuff. Some of the highlights, um, we've been working on a fungal inoculant project on La Presti Farms, which has been really fun and really cool. I'm kind of excited to see how things wrap up because I think it's getting close. Uh, and we've done some, uh, I did a tomato trial essentially on a couple of the farms on Nolan Natural Farms and on um, Donald Morrow Farms, just right behind you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and the weather really kind of played havoc with that particular um, project, but that's okay because it's kind of interesting to see the disparity in, you know, locations that are relatively close mile wise but just storms hit violent with four inches of rain and avondale with like one and a half inches of rain so it's kind of interesting to see just this the spatial difference in how storms were happening so different um different things were observed from that project than i anticipated but it's still pretty cool um we did a couple of different farm tours so we took general community folks out to the farms um, one of them we did uh, we purchased some cantaloupe and brought it back to the office and made cantaloupe ice cream and the other one we purchased some this most recent one we purchased some hubbard squashes came back to the office and made um, pumpkin empanadas with those so that was kind of fun um, working on some grants and getting some grant funding for a couple of the farmers there's um a variety of types of grants that are out there that can help either with um, labor saving costs, um, some that can help with like equipment saving costs for, and then coupled with that provide low access or low access to low income families. Um, trying to think what else. I feel like it's probably the big things that, that we've been doing on yeah. my end at least. Um, to kind of add on to that, the new thing we did that actually went off more than we thought it would, we created a like a basic Pueblo specific weed ID. Um, so it's a trifold brochure and we handed it out um, in a couple different places and it went off really well. So not only does it show like a picture, it gives you like a description of what the weed is and then we linked it to our QR code fact sheet. So it tells you from a management perspective, um, how do you control the weeds from a cultural bio, um, biomechanical, um, just the whole works of like, what can you do and how do you do that? Like on a cycle system, depending on what weed you're dealing with. We get the more major ones. Um, but we're hoping to kind of expand that and make it more user friendly because people like having the hard copy so they could go out in the field and like look at it in person. And because a lot of them would be like, oh, I have a thistle, but it can tell us like what, what are the three is thistles? Because we're like, oh, well, we have three different species. And they're like, oh, and then they're trying to describe it to us. So um, nice. them having it in their pocket and then being able to use it digitally as well was mm -hmm. like a nice pairing. So um, we're looking to expand that. So that went really well. Um, we also um, started to get involved with the Colorado Heritage Natural Resource Program. So they're doing a wetland mapping from Fort Collins all the way down to Pueblo, um, which is really exciting. So we've gotten involved in that along with some other partners um, between here and Fort Collins. So we'll be doing a lot of wetland mapping um, and helping them with that um, and just getting some like wildlife data, some 
data on like the Fountain Creek areas and things like that. So if you guys have an interest in that or you like want to be involved, um, we are taking like different stakeholder interest stuff with the mapping and different things they're doing. So um, I know it's a bit in purpose of that. Like it's basically to update the maps because like here in Pueblo they haven't been done. I think she said since like the 1980s. So it's like really, really outdated. <laughs> Um, and then it's like, you can't do it for like conservation grants. You can't do it for yeah. wildland mapping. Like there's so much like without those maps, they can't, you yeah. really can't do any like projects really. So it's, it's a hamper to the community. Mm -hmm. Um, especially cause they're trying to, they're trying to upgrade the Fountain Creek area and make it more of like a tourist area and things like that. And without data, it's, it. it's really yeah. hard to do that. Um, and this place is, they're, they're funded through a grant that they're trying to do through the EPA. So if they get it, um, then like it won't be on any of the the cities to mm -hmm. figure out how to do it from a funding perspective. So um, that's really cool. The other big thing is um, some of you might be familiar with our seedling tree program that we've done around this time of year. So that program is still happening through the forest ser service with the nursery. However, we are not going to be like the person who collects your orders and does it. Um, they've just rearranged their process this year. So we're kind of, it's easier for you guys to just go ahead and do it. You can still get them shipped to you directly through UPS. Um, and we have all the links and stuff. So if you're curious, you can let us know and we can get you the info. Um, and it's on a first come first serve basis. So you can get them between now till April is what they were saying. So there's a variety of trees, shrubs, plants, and flowers um, you can get on behalf of the nursery. So you can check them all out. They have them all listed. Um, there's different buying guides for recommendations. So if you're curious, um, we can definitely send that info to you guys. Um, and then uh, we tried a, I tried a, like a growing grapes class in Pueblo that went off really, really well. It sold out. <laughs> it was a three-week class with our virtual culture list, um, and it went off swimmingly. It was highly liked and we're probably going to do that again i'm not sure if it'll be another three-week course but it'll be pretty intensive again um like kind of focusing on that management perspective and then we did a follow-up with a wine and chili pairing class that happened this fall as a like value added end product deal um focused on colorado wines and that worked out and we focused really on public chilies so we had like actual public green chili we made calabacita and then we paired it with the wines and um that was a really big hit as well so doing those pairing classes from spring to fall and how you transform your product from an ag perspective was really well received. We had people come from over three hours away to that class. So like they'd been watching and waiting. <laughs> so, um, so it was definitely appreciated. Like people are, they're watching what Pueblo is doing from an ag perspective, which is the really cool takeaway from that. Um, and like she said, we did a lot of tours. We did a lot of booths. This year, we were just really present in the community from that standpoint um, and got it up and going. And then looking forward, um, we just have some big projects happening. Like we're gonna expand kind of a native plant deal. We've talked about doing like a native mm -hmm. plant tour and some stuff in the spring. We've talked about doing like a weed management class, um, things like that, like a grasshopper management class has been asked and requested many, many times. So we're gonna do that one in the spring for sure. Um, and we'll do other things like that. So looking at more like a plant and an insect perspective, both for crops and like a rangeland perspective, um, we're going to try to get those classes out in the springtime and kind of introduce that to some folks. And then hopefully as things start to warm up and like we actually have plants and other things getting active in the community, we'll do some hands-on tours about it and do some hands-on field work with that because there seemed to be pretty good interest with that. So yeah, anything else forward you want to add to that? I think that's that's it. Yeah. Okay. I think um, you should probably mention all the carts that. Yeah, that's did. just it's gonna go down a list. So then we're gonna jump to the cart portion, um, which again to remind you all that sounds for the community animal response team. Um, we are wrapping up our 2023 season. Our Friday is our um, annual award banquet and ceremony that the team has. Um, so we'll be doing that. But they've been on standby or on call for the last week and a half thanks to the St. Charles fire so until that until that storm came in um we were we were on go pretty much the entire time <laughs> um because it was it we got requests for help and standby for um from a couple of different counties so we were watching that pretty closely um we did get activated once this year for the North Creek fire that happened in April um so we did go out and we did do uh, a horse rescue two horse rescues for that 
um, and that Lori ran that one. And then we've grown the program. There's a lot more new team volunteers. We did a drill up with the zoo this year. Um, so they participated, the sheriffs got involved, the fire guys got involved. We were involved with the chemical stockpile emergency program exercise that the county put on this year. Um, we did a hazmat drill with one of the fire stations. Um, we went to the Pueblo Zoo and actually did a behind the scenes bison tour in their bison enclosure with one of their handlers. Um, just because we do have bison here from a production standpoint, they are handled very differently than cattle. Um, so getting up close and personal and their bison did like run around and like snorted and show their stuff. So it was great for the team to kind of see that because they had a better appreciation of these are not cows. <laughs> um, so that was that was really good. So the team is off and running. Um, we are now one of the outside of the big counties like Weld or Larimer up there. Um, we are now one of the largest volunteer community based disaster teams for animals. And we are also we are actually the most trained one in the entire state as of right now. So um, thank you. So we have we have grown. We are pushing forward with that. We are getting a new trailer, which is exciting. Hopefully we're going to just say we are. We find out next uh, in December. So but we're going to just say that they're going to prove it. So we will have new supplies um, for our community <clears throat> and that will benefit not only us, but our surrounding neighbors, as we are the only team in the southern region. So we are the only team, we are the only trailer, we are the only supplies. <laughs> so kind of a big deal, which is great. Um, and then we, I went on behalf of um, extension to what is called the Extension Disaster Education Network in Georgia and presented on behalf of the university there and they were super excited about it. So programs from our university are now going to be blasted nationwide on their website and highlighting Pueblo specifically in our team. And then mm -hmm. um, next year, this coming year, Texas, Nebraska, Wyoming, Montana, and Georgia want to come and meet our team and see what we do from a response activation team-wise. So um, we have gotten nationwide attention from other states um, from a disaster standpoint for our animal rescues. So that's pretty cool. It's a pretty big deal and we're running off with that. So it's going really well. Um, it's full steam ahead with that and we are we're going ahead. So it's a great resource. Um, if you hear people, especially with the fires that were happening, we're well aware that if the snow doesn't keep coming, we're probably going to keep getting big fires like what we saw with the St. Charles fire. So if you guys hear things, um, just let them know that program is available. You can always just direct them directly to me um, and we can handle calls and questions and things like that from a resource perspective. So um, that's kind of that. We touched on research and projects. Is there anything else you want to add? No, okay. Yeah. Do you guys have any, we'll, we'll give you time to like talk about things, but do you guys have any questions about any of that or anything you saw that we yeah. did that you were like, ah, how did that go or anything? Um, I'm just seeing the national coverage on CARP, so kudos to you for Thank doing you. that. And um, well, I think the wine class is great. I just, very fun. Vine lunch should have vines in it. Very very fun. Fun. <laughs> yes. Like, so you guys do a great job. So Thank you. keep it up. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So now we're going to jump into the part of like you guys giving us feedback um, and kind of more of like an open discussion time frame. Um, so we've talked a couple times and you guys have brought it up in a few meetings about doing like an events calendar and we've heard that and we've put some thoughts together. So we're going to do a um, starting next year, we're going to do a quarterly calendar and we're going to stick to at least two events that are going to be on that calendar to start with until um, we have like a good basis and we'll put other things on there just subject to change, we'll have them highlighted and things like that. Um, and that's gonna help us both from a tracking perspective, from a reporting perspective, and then it'll be public. So not only will you guys be able to see it, but then um, we get asked a lot at our classes too, do we have a calendar? <laughs> so, um, so we have heard that um, and we're gonna be working on that. So we appreciate that suggestion from you all, but we wanted to let you know that we'll be, so probably in that spring meeting, we should have a, a viewable version for you all to see. Um, we might even try to pair it where like maybe we won't make it public until you all can kind of review it and we might work through it as a group. So we will tentatively let you know, but that's kind of the, the plan there. Um, anything you'd like to add to the present? Okay. Um, so now we're going to get to like a, the Q&A portion with you guys. So we kind of wanted to see um, what do you guys want to see in 2024? And we had some specific questions for you. So if you guys have seen our newsletter and that comes out once a week through email and then our Facebook post we've been doing like tip of the week and we've changed it up every quarter so right now we're on soil soil tip of the week we've done um we did weed of the week insect of the week and production tip of the week are the four we did this year we've done diseases of the week. and we did diseases of the week um so we picked a different one every week we did like a short little um 
blurb on it with some pictures and then we linked it to our fact sheets is kind of how it ran depending on the topic. We had good engagement um, both online and in person with those. We feel it, it spread our reach, but we've kind of, we we wanted to see if you guys thought that was, if you saw it, if you thought it was beneficial. And then if you thought it was beneficial, if you have a topic idea for the next upcoming four quarters for next year. So that's kind of where we're at. So anyone feel free to unmute, talk in person and give us your feedback. Don't be afraid to repeat stuff. People usually need to see stuff seven times before it actually sinks in. So um, as a <clears throat> social media marketing perspective, don't be afraid to repeat stuff. Like push sure. it in front of people as much as possible. Okay. So like if you have a really per, uh, high performing post, post it again in a hundred days. Okay. And just repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Um, <clears throat> this adds to two topics that I think we should focus on is like water tips of the week and irrigation. Ooh, yep. That's a, um, a good I think it'd be great for public kind to establish ourselves as experts in water. Absolutely. Because it's, it be. it's never going to not be a problem. Yeah, exactly. So um, <laughs> irrigation practices, water conservation practices, gardening, water, you know, water, mm -hmm. water tips of the week, and then um, veterinarian care because there's a vet shortage and that's going to be a larger problem going forward. So how can we have an extension, solve that problem or be part of that solution? Yeah. So um, because it can't get into a vet, what are things that you can take care of at home? And sure. what are those tips of how do you dress a small, like mm -hmm. we're, we're not performing a C-section on the cow at home, right. but are, what are those small things that we could perform at home to alleviate the pressure on vets? Fantastic. Yeah. And that would be a good pairing because we do have a veterinarian specialist who's specifically set for extension. So that's like her her whole um role really. Perfect. Um so she like we have somebody we can tap into. Tap into that resource. Perfect. <laughs> that's Perfect. not a she's busy, but she's not as like she's not on the scale of like a practicing veterinarian anymore. So we can we can pull her a bit more than we could like other vets. So we we appreciate that. That's, that's but yeah, really I think all those topics just I know it's, it's great. Right, like when you get to the point of like, oh my God, I've posted this 100,000 times. People must think I'm so annoying. That's just when you're barely scratching the surface. <laughs> so people are starting to remember it. So yeah. Just repeat, okay. reuse okay. and repeat. That's okay. good. Any other That's thoughts great. or tips of the week? And it can be like anything, even if you guys like, if because I mean, you all know ag is, is huge. So don't feel like yeah. you have to Broadly, stick to farming or ranching. Broads. Like, um, like Kennedy or Drew, if you guys have specific thoughts on that, feel free to. Hi, everybody. I have a question. You know, it just seems like lately that we've seen a lot of where wildlife is really encroaching a lot more in residential and in farming communities. I, it just, I don't know if it's like the media is just out there advertising it more or if there really is an influx, um, do we know? And if there is, like, um, how do we navigate that? I'm just curious. Yeah, that is a great one. Um, I put, yeah, I broke that wrong. Um, there, there has been an increase and in a lot of it, part of it's from a climate perspective. Um, and, and there's, there's new predator, um, movement in this state that's not been seen before. Like if you guys are not aware, um, there are, there is a pair of, we're, they're assuming that they've now become a mated pair, but there is a pair, there is a, both a male and a female grizzly bear um, in part of Southern Colorado in the mountains. So in the, in the San Juans. So we've not had grizzlies here in a long, long time in Colorado. They are now here. Obviously we're going to assume there's going to be cubs at some point. Um, and the wolves are here. There are the ones they're going to release. And then there's another pack that came from Wyoming um, that they are not tracking with CPW. So there are larger predators, which are also disturbing um, like the prey species, even down to here that are moving them about. Um, and there's been like an increase in mountain lion population um, in our area. There's been a different thing with the black bears going on. And then even our small wildlife, like, rabbits, squirrels, raccoons, that kind of stuff. There's been interesting um, dips and in, in highs with them as well this year. So so there, there is, it's not just the the news doing it. There actually, there's, there's data to back that up. So that's a great point. And people are running into them 
more often. And sometimes they're not as scared of people as maybe they should be. They're a little citified. <laughs> um, and that can prevent, that can create some challenges because in the city, there's, you have to be careful about what options you go about handling those those concerns. So that's a very good point. We will, I think that's a, that's a really good tip of the week because there's a lot of animals to hit on. So that's easily a, a quarterly deal. Um, I really like that one. Anyone, any other thoughts? Diseases, weeds, and insects are all good. That's okay. like a super long list. There, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, we weren't running out of items. No. <laughs> we spent like running out of gumption. So, <laughs> so we switched to that. But yeah, because they're always good. Options. If, you, if you want ideas, you're going to send me an email. Remind me. Okay, sure. Maybe with what you've done so far. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, because there might be some more relevant diseases yeah. or insects yeah. that we didn't hit upon, yeah. you know, that we could definitely re re get into. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely can do that. And Drew, we can definitely even do like we might do like an insect thing where we focus on like pollinators for a while. Um and not just like bees, but also there's lots of other things that have you done like beneficial insects. Yeah, yeah, I could I can actually do uh some tips for bees. Or uh, I could do a presentation. You know, what, I don't know. Not a big presentation. Mm -hmm. no, Beneficial insects is good because we like we did a few. I mean, we kind of but, mixed it up. Some good guys, yeah. some bad guys, and just kind of. But we could do a whole focus on just mm -hmm. beneficial. Sorry, um, beneficial insects, like specifically, because yeah. a lot of people, yeah, and even because even home gardeners kind of sometimes think that like all bugs are bad. Mm -hmm. So just reminding them there's a balance. So yeah, no, that's that's good. Cool. Well, you guys gave us like more than yeah, four, so thank perfect. you. <laughs> that's, we will do that for sure. Okay. Um, okay, the other kind of things we wanted your guys' feedback on is we talked about doing more like value added classes, like take for example, like the grape class, like we did that and then we did the value added product, like then you turned the grapes into a secondary product. In this case, we focused on wine, but we did talk about like jams, jellies, things like that. Um, from what you guys see in the community, I know you all kind of have your hands in lots of different pots. Does that seem like something you like people often talk about or seem like they'd want to do? Um, what you guys do in the community? In a bigger picture, I want you guys to think about your future specifically, like you two. You're pretty young in your careers. So and this program's pretty young, like you guys are kind of starting from scratch. So just thinking big picture here of like, what do you want your legacy to be of Pueblo Extension? I would like to see it where you're really helping out the producers and that Pueblo Ag is phenomenal and it's up there with Weld and Larimer County, County, Morgan County, and Kicks Butt and all that sort of stuff. I also understand that extension, the entire point of extension is ex to extend into the community and bridge that gap between rural and urban and whatever. Um, and I, I love the wine and carry. I love it. Oh my gosh, I love it. So, so, so exciting. But how effective is that for producers? Sure. Yeah. So I think that's a great three to five year plan of continuing mm -hmm. those projects because that really builds your, like right. builds your program. Because you guys are starting from scratch, like not not a Pueblo doesn't know what extension is, or you you haven't right. had that um, big recognition in a long time. So these classes really set that stage. This is what you do. You get to meet people. But how effective is that for your producers? And, and that makes sense. I mean, I think that's definitely the long term goal mm -hmm. of making agriculture in Pueblo County. Super strong. The thing, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And I can tell you from like, just, well, I'll just pick on the wine class. There, I mean, um, because we had the winemaker from the Abbey come. Mm -hmm. And so he actually struck a deal with people because you got a, a grape plant by attending the mm -hmm. spring session. So he actually struck them a deal that if they planted it and as their plants mature, if they bring him their grapes, he actually gives them a discounted rate of putting them into a, in this case, it was the wine. Mm -hmm. um, but like, there were other people who had reached out and said, you know, if you, if you sell me your grapes, like I will give you back the jam or whatever. So it actually did kind of, it started making a, a new cycle of operations and yeah. operation change to benefit 
and, and it was very small scale because rates are pretty pretty mm -hmm. niche. Um, but like we've talked about some of the large cattle ranches that are custom, like um, uh, Elizabeth's uh, Martino, oh, yeah. like we've talked about pairing with them and doing like a meat tour and then, you know, kind of highlighting like Martino and um, Sam Gray's and Curtis and like some of the other ones and kind of show like this is why, you know, what is grass fed versus grain finish and like all these things and like buying local, mm -hmm. you know, what is your price point, all this stuff, which goes back to benefiting them. Um, right. But those are very consumer focused. Which they is are. Great. Yes. And that is the point of extension is you extend to the community. Yeah. But eventually, how, how are you benefiting Martino's? Right. Like, what does she need for her production sure. so that she can produce the highest quality beef. Right. And well, I can't speak for the crop side, but I know from a cattle, at least from a livestock perspective, lots of people are interested in AI. Yeah. That's been a hot topic. So I'm working actually CSU Pueblo and then the Lamar Community College. We're actually talking about bringing their AI clinics that they do and trying to bring it here. Um, it's a bigger feat than I realized when I started down that rabbit hole, but it doesn't mean it's, it's definitely, it's going to happen. Um, it's just, it might take a little bit more time than I thought. Just yeah, right. a lot of so This is that, definitely but... a bigger topic and much of a more futuristic topic. Yeah. I think Christy um, gets into the more produced, she she goes out there and like talks to the farmers mm -hmm. and, you know, um, kind of thing. And um, from what I've seen her do, it's harder to, because they're busy. You right. don't know if and the community is particularly yes. right? <laughs> standoffish because they're set in their ways kind of thing. So if you tell them we can grow grapes here, you know, they are established and they don't want right. to hide things and kind of thing, you know, but maybe that's great class kind of show that you know we're yes. processing yes. and it, it, it is a, a okay climate to grow grapes here. You know, even though the producers kind of don't want to see that or hear that. Right. <laughs> like how to break into the producers is or, you well, know, extremely difficult. Okay. Uh, let me, I did it. Which brings me to my next thing is how are we going to help you to establish yourselves as experts so that you okay. extension is the go-to place mm -hmm. for anyone and everybody to come to? What are you going to be experts sure. in? Yeah. And I think, I mean, and you guys do it now, but if there's, you know, people that you meet and you're like, oh, you know, who would be really great for you to grab coffee with is yeah. so-and-so yeah. from Meal Burgers yeah. or, you know, whoever, I mean, obviously we know them, but like whoever, um, or especially if they're like a new producer, that would, because I don't know, you know, we'd love to do that because um, sometimes new producers are easy <laughs> a little bit especially if not from those cases. I, I understand I hear what you're saying but how do we get to the point where you're the one being recommended and I know that's a bigger problem yeah in the sure. entire community but how are we elevating you to with certifications classes you know yeah. are you guys pursuing your PhDs your master's you know <laughs> that's a big topic but right. how do we get to the point where you guys are so, like so well recognized as experts Producers can't help but think of you like, oh, I better go to this. Mm -hmm. so sure, and I and I think you kind of just mentioned it. We're we're starting out fresh. Like, yeah, this is yeah. this is a, a twenty year, you know, yes, long term projection, right? You know, I'm thinking of other extension folks who I've talked about, and they're recognized, but they've been in their career for twenty five years. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. so I think with time, yeah. It kind of just comes and mm -hmm. with age, I guess, you know, yeah. with time and age, you know, yeah, there's more recognition. And so, you know, just being patient for that, but also continuing to pursue, I think, and just with the advisory committee's help for in that pursuit, you know, so we're meeting these at these certain times and then we go out into the community and maybe we forget everything that happened here at this particular meeting. And that's fine, you know, yeah. but if we take that just the one step further each time we meet okay we're here we did this meeting um you know the next person you go have lunch with oh have you heard about extension or you know yeah. whatever it is you know that you feel comfortable saying or doing no pressure but you know just if you're out there and there happens to be somebody who's like oh I'm interested in starting a small farm oh hey you guys Go reach out to your local extension, extension folks. Yeah. They can help you get something started, or they can they can provide resources for you to get that started. 
And so I think it's just, it's part of that long, slow building yeah. trust process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but it'll get us. <clears throat> moving over to the state and yes, and yes. as a state, yes. I guess mm -hmm. that would have been under staff updates. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Um, okay. So no. Christy has the opportunity to go to producers and go to these little farms to to do these trials, to make the trials and, and other things. And I think that helps, yes. you know, in the, the expert, right. um, yeah. yes. helping see this office's experts. And now that Beth is going to be a state employee, mm -hmm. she'll have more of the opportunities to get the funding mm -hmm. to those kinds of things. Excellent. So that, yeah. That, right. yeah, that's, yeah, that is true. Because that was, it's, and it's a weird deal. It was just, I can't access certain things from a research perspective until I had hit that. And it was just, it was a different, it was just a weird thing with the, with the way the university was set up. So that was, and it was weird. Cause like Christy could help me, but she had to like sign. It was a whole thing. So having that good so, ability yeah, now works out and then, it, and getting, like she said, your guys' feedback is also critical. Cause there are so many certifications and class, there's a lot that we can do in our own time. But we don't. We also don't want to get so bogged down where we're chasing all these certifications and we're not. We're not giving back, and we're not. We're not meeting with the producers. It's not relevant to the producers. Right. We don't want to take the time to chase a it certification. Down. I could get it, but if it's not going to help anybody, right. what's the point? Yeah. I guess that what goes to my <laughs> original statement there is, whatever we're pursuing or you're pursuing make sure that it's relevant for yes. your twenty-year plan. Yeah. Right. And that's where we count on you guys. Like we want to hear what the community is saying like what even if it seems like a far-fetched topic we want it like like the wildlife thing like we want to hear that because we're gonna we can explore that avenue and see if there isn't something we could do um like we both are now getting certified in, in the drought advisor program so we do have a producer that's going to do that um there is a livestock pasture certification program and we this office was certified when the person who had my position before um, moved on that certification went with him so we're looking at re-upping that so there are different ones we can definitely do that have been shown in the past or present to be useful to our community that we're definitely going to do. But if you guys hear of things from any perspective, like please let us know because I'm pretty. There's probably a certification right. <laughs> we can yeah, probably get. Yeah. So we are also um, going to be a testing site location for uh, testing site applicators. Yeah. So that is coming probably springtime, but that will be will be a certified location for testing. And then we'll also be able to um, provide training on uh, pesticide safety. Yeah. So, yeah, but no, it's, I mean, it's, it's a good I don't, point. I think that's still relevant to most yes. producers, yes. I guess. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I, yeah, go ahead. Hi, yeah, I have something. Um, so recently I was able to be a part of what's called the Colorado Creative Leadership Program. Um, some of you might be familiar with it. And, um, my there was several different cohorts, but one of the cohorts um, they focused on food, um, and the one of the one of those cohorts. What they did was that they realized that like all these different distributors, like Rocky Mountain Sear and Food to Power and Colorado Springs, and you know, like a, a lot of them weren't really talking to each other. Or didn't some of them didn't even know that each other existed throughout the state, and so they created a website that and i don't know if anyone's familiar with this they they created a website that they're all able now to talk to each other so for example if they get like a load of potatoes and they know that they're not going to go through all of their potatoes instead of letting them go to waste they can call up another uh distributor and say hey do you want to, we we have this influx of potatoes coming through would you like to take it I think it really needs to go a step further. I think that some of the resources that um, we offer here could be added to that website as just being a, re a resource tab. And I'd be more than happy to connect, you know, if needed, if you're not aware of it, um, to that program. Because uh, I thought it was a brilliant idea of getting people talking together throughout the state. Yeah, but that's awesome. I, we'd love that. Yeah. You could share that connection. Sure. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Any other thoughts in this kind of realm? I know there's a couple other things on here, but with that topic in mind. Um, the other idea is grant writing for farmers. Mm -hmm. Like, there's money out there. How do we get it? Yeah. 
I'm working on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's a long, yeah, big, yeah. big topic to yeah, tackle absolutely. too. Yeah, but. and with that, we also have to, we're trying to figure out the best like mode of getting people to pay attention to it because yeah. she gets like a lot of views online seems to be a good, we were actually talking about that today. So it might be where like, she might be like a webinar and then, you know, we just, and it, maybe it comes down to a posting thing again and just constantly, you know, yeah, reminding re people like yeah. this, this is a resource. It's here, it's posted. Like you can look at it at any time and then like call Christy once you watch it or, you know, if you have questions or whatever. So, um, so yeah, we're definitely, we're definitely looking at that too and trying to figure out because that comes down to the thing too, where it's like, we don't want to put on a class and like nobody shows. Nobody shows. <laughs> yes, right. So you have to do what works. Yeah. But just make sure that you're staying true to what you, what, what do you want in 20 years and how are you going to build there? Yeah. Yep. So you don't get lost in fun things. Yes. <laughs> to be harsh. Yeah. No, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I thought too, that because, you know, she's trying to get it freezer truck for a farm, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get a grant for a freezer truck. And, and like those kind of things, helping, yes. you know, farms and farmers do that, kind of break the ice too, to get in there. You know? yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you can establish yourself as being very helpful and effectively helpful, right. and exactly. but doing that, then that word of mouth marketing is a little bit mm -hmm. far better than any oh, absolutely. Paid advertising. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and well, this kind of goes back and forth on it, but so like, so there's a big push that I, I don't know how much from the farm side, but on the ranch side, I can tell you there's, there's a bigger push to involve the really, really small people, which is like urban scaling, which I can tell you what they want. They want small scale make and take classes that they can then promote items to their clients. That's what they want. That's, that's what they want. They want to understand that. And they want to understand management practices, small scale diversification in like an acre. That's what they want to know. So that's, there's a push to include them from by who? Yeah, who's pushing that? Um, like I can so I'm highly involved in like the stockmans, and so because their membership is dropping because there's not as many large operations outside of the feedlot guys, and feedlots are gonna do what feedlots do. They're not their their process is so entirely different than like a cow calf um operation. So a lot of the cow calf guys are like, well, like we're kind of set outside of pasture help or weed ID or basic <laughs> things that we've been doing for a long time. They're not looking to be too involved, but we have a lot of small people who are coming in, wanting to get involved, wanting to learn, wanting to be active. But what they want is very, very different than what we can apply to a big cow calf producer. So, so the push is coming from the community. Yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're going with that from a from like a ranching perspective, because um, cow calf guys really the biggest thing they need is AI, bull testing, and veterinary care. Those are like the constant topics, and unfortunately outside of educational or tip of the week or whatever, those other ones we can't necessarily get too into. Like veterinarian, that's that's like the university at large or other funding opportunities. Um, we have talked with the community, like from a county commissioner and CC Pueblo about getting something there, like a facility built where people could rent it out and go get their bulls tested and bring in like, I can call up my vet and be like, hey, Dr. Barker, can you be here at they set it up and they're like, can you be here at one? We'll run our bulls in real quick, take 30 minutes, great. And there's like a fee to do that. So we've we've talked with that. There seems to be excitement in the higher up in the community about doing like some kind of large animal facility that can be rented out for producers specifically, because that is the problem. That's the other thing I'm hearing is that facilities are being ran down or shut down. And these folks don't have 40,000 to drop on a new head gate or <laughs> whatever they need. They just, they don't have it, um, but they can't get better genetics because then they're having AI everything because can't get their bulls tested. Mm -hmm. So um, we're looking at bigger topics like that, but we have to find the money for it or who's going to fund it. Mm -hmm. So it's also trying to impress upon the county commissioners, the mayor, that these are funds that need to be set aside to some extent because this is what benefits our agriculture sector because our producers can't and there isn't anyone around us that you'd mm -hmm. have to go pretty far to do these services anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's just getting them to understand the relevance. But unfortunately for them, the relevance doesn't happen unless we have the data. So we got to somehow get the data to prove it's needed, <laughs> which is yeah. the missing piece. So working on the data side is kind of where I'm focusing on that to prove like it's not just word of mouth that there's an actual need for it. Um, so but the Stockman's is also taking that under consideration. So kind of using them as a testing spot and the Colorado Cattlemen's Association at large is very interested in that because they're seeing that in other counties as well 
um, and trying to figure out how do we use a data standpoint to pull in other large stakeholders who could fund facilities or equipment or whatever that could be used at a community at large. So they're kind of, we're, we're in talks and we're trying to figure out how that would work. So, yeah, so there's that. Um, Christy, how are you handling the balance of the put between like small scale urban farm and you know more production scale? Yeah, I think I try try to balance it out. Um, there is there a lot of the small scale urban farm folks are like doing you know one acre all together, and they've got a little bit of vegetables and some goats all together, and so. I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing less of needs for me for that very, very specific things, because a lot of the like small scale backyard vegetables essentially is what it is. No offense to anybody, <laughs> but you know, that would fall more under the purview of our horticulture specialist. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still trying to focus more and more on the large scale farms and, and kind of stay, stay within that scope. Um, that's really what my job was created to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm kind of staying le dabbling less in the small backyard garden urban farm folks I'm trying to focus. I mean, I'm happy to help whomever, yeah. but you know, yeah, trying to stay a little bit more focused on the, the large farm productions okay. because that's essentially what my job is to be yeah. doing. Yeah. So, yeah. and we know that's kind of hard to understand because there's like three of us <laughs> but that that's I know, nice it's thing. weird because there's, there's a lot of gray yeah there is so um, yeah. and that's the hard part is I'm really mm -hmm. outside of the 4-H folks I'm the only livestock person and I'm the only overall ag person so there isn't they don't call anybody else but me unfortunately so you get pulled in the left yeah which it's just it's just balancing it which is fine but yeah so that's and that's why I got, like it's definitely nice when there's a horticulture person because they can definitely help a lot of those more yeah, I don't mean I'm, I, guys. Can, I can help you guys ID, you know, backyard bugs and I can I can do all of the yeah. things. I just am like I just don't die. I don't focus your classes. You're establishing yourself as an expert. <laughs> right. You're, you're very focused. Death <laughs> deeper right. On friend. one yeah. focus. Yeah, yeah. More so than yeah. yeah. With well, that as an advisor, yep. um tip the scale or I'm pushing down on <laughs> consider the larger producers yeah. more. Not to say that the backyard one acre people aren't important. And you have to you have to balance a lot of input. Mm -hmm. Sure. But yeah. I'm putting I'm just voicing my input right now. Yeah, I can. I'm pushing more heavy on I would like to see you focus more on what can you do to help the bigger producers. Yeah. Like, what can you do to help the feedlots? They don't want help. <laughs> Why not? They, like, I'm not, that's a, I'm it, not, I don't want an answer. That's a hypothetical question okay. of, well, why not? And why can't I be an answer to whatever questions they have? Yeah. And that's, and I, I don't want an answer. You can ponder <laughs> that. And I can tell you, it's, I, I know you don't want to answer, but I can tell you, because the things they're concerned about are outside of the realm of extension. Okay. So it's like, it's such like, it's legislature, it's policies. It's yeah, things like and, that. Yeah. yeah. See if you just so that's, that. and that's, there, there are certain barriers in that realm that I cannot, I Don't cannot touch. touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, unfortunately, other organizations yes. definitely yeah. can that are sitting in this room. Um, but in the role of extension, there are extension lets you do a lot of things, but there are some, there are a few like hard cut rules of what you can and cannot do. Some of those things like that are just, it, yeah, it's absolutely sense. not. So unfortunately, like they tell me, and I'm like, I hear that, I understand that, I can connect you with a group that is better suited for what your problem is about, but unfortunately I am not the right resource. So that's the other thing. So it just, which is great. So they still like will call me to connect with somebody, but there there are certain issues like that where unfortunately yeah. Yeah. you can't judge. So yeah, that's the only thing with those guys, but but yeah. So I know you didn't want to answer, but I was like, that's like, yeah, that's, good. that's, that's good. why there are some barriers that are just like, I cannot, I, it is not my call to move it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that kind of like touches on the rest of the stuff we kind of had, unless you had something else in mind is, are there other big things you guys specifically are like, you've heard a lot about, or you're kind of like, I'd like to see more of this. For you, um, CART just got national recognition. So is there anything that we need that we could get a chieftain article about that? Because that's a big deal. That's a big deal. That's exactly yeah. yeah. And that is, um, it's newsworthy. This, uh, we have 
the chieftain with pricing wise well you know but if we, if we yeah. yeah if we you know have Sorry. them and call yeah, yeah. talk to you interview That's you true. or yeah. something then yeah. it would be a story not an, a kind of ad an article ad yeah. right yeah yeah that's a good idea yeah, if you're getting state recognition national yeah. recognition that's a big deal it and is yeah. again people need Just to establish that. themselves as experts you need a third party yeah to shoot your home yes yeah and it's it's definitely helpful and it, it benefits our community because right. then it means it means we have more resources to help the people who live here so. and they do need stuff to write about exactly they're all the starting the story this is a good one so i'm happy yeah. with that yeah so cool any other things you guys are kind of hearing about in the community or yourself or kind of in the realm of agriculture this big wide world of agriculture <laughs> um FYI, Farm Bureau, their annual meeting, we're going to cover, we're having somebody from CSU that sent out that survey. Oh, yes. Yeah. That they're going to come and talk about the survey results oh, cool. for an annual meeting. So okay. Just nice. FYI. Okay. Do you know who, who it is? Um, Katie. Is it Dunker? No. No, that's okay. If you don't remember, it's fine. I'm just curious. I'll look it up. Okay. So that's going to be uh, January 6th. Okay. And for your thing of the week, you could do nutrient efficiency. Oh, yeah. So, so to generate I mean, yeah. uh, plenty of nutrients. So, like plenty of options there. Or totally. Yeah. Kennedy or Drew, do you have like, or anything else? Or Kennedy, if you have like anything else, like in the wildlife aspect or other things you're hearing in that realm, um, Feel free to throw it out there as well. We'll do. I don't have anything more right now. Okay. Cool. cool. All righty. Um, well, thank you all for your well, you have suggestions, suggestions for, for people. people. Yes, so I, I was just going to say thank you all for the feedback on our our year coming. Um, so we are we have one open board seat as of um right now so we have our we are a board of six with you guys um we're we're we can be at six but really we're supposed to hit seven um so if you all had suggestions of names we could contact and reach out you all kind of kind of seen the commitment it's just twice a year it's just kind of meeting we will always feed you um and we always do a hybrid <laughs> for those that can't be in person um and you know we're happy to send them the bylaws with the term commitments and all that stuff. So and it's we're really we're looking for different voices of the community who have at least like a food part in some way um, that can kind of add to that, or they're just like highly involved in the community. So just people who are going to be um, willing to put in input. So if you have you can share the names with us now, or you can like send it to us like offline from this meeting. That's fine. But um, Tom or Brian Breger, okay, would give you a cattle connection. To okay. Them. I do not, but can you give yes. me contact? Um, Anthony Cortez. He and I have chatted, yeah. but but not about this. So. I and I don't know if he would say yes. But right. Lots of people go to him for advice, so why not give his get his advice officially? Yeah. Okay. Um, and maybe somebody from retail, of like somebody <laughs> from Tractor Supply, Big R, um, John Deere, Rustlers. I think. And I, I cannot do that. I don't know, but um, we have enough to them. Yeah, some somebody. of them from retail, because mm -hmm. that would probably be a really good perspective to have. Yeah, is they know what's selling, mm -hmm. and which is usually an indicator of what people are needing. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's good, and we have. Actually, it's through CART and some other programs. We actually know the managers of both Big R's and Tractor Supply because. We're constantly there yeah. getting things. <laughs> we have a cart other programs, so that works out really well. No, that's a good point. Yeah. And I would also like and or consider wrestlers and um, or rivers mm -hmm. sure. retail also. Yeah. 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 And I know Four Rivers donates quite a bit to our different our other programs yes. anyway. So they're familiar with some of what we do. So. Why not bring them in? Yeah. yeah. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other names you guys think of? If not, you can always send them to us later. So um, it's not a huge deal. It's perfect. And nobody yeah. comes to mind. So, and we had a few names we had tossed around as well. So we'll probably just reach out to a few folks and see 
Yeah, who's our willing board can be up to eleven. Yeah, so we can we can have more than seven. Know, so so let's just let's yeah. have the people. Yeah. And it works out because then we have to we do have to have a set number for quorum. So like it's a, it's kind of, it's a little nicer if we have a bigger group because then we can we need quorum. Yeah. 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 So okay. Any other items you all want to throw out there or um the lady that the um Katie Kramer. Um, okay. I don't want to know Yeah. I mean, that's the red point from Pablo. Hmm. But I I don't know. But she's the one that's kind of heading up that survey results hmm. and. I'm curious cool. to see what those survey results are. And then yeah. she said she's yeah. going to connect somebody with the CSU Animal Vet School to then talk about what they're doing. Yeah, that would be really good. Cool. Cool. Well, awesome. Well, um, thank you all. Like we said, we'll probably send out like a save the date thing in December. Or... Oh, also, do you want any kind of winter meeting or uh, water partnership or anything like that? Yeah, I guess we didn't talk about that. Um, so uh, the Sun Soil Water, um, I guess, summit is um, we we did partner with Public Food Project last year. The partnership was, I think we had mentioned, um, heavy year yeah, on their site. And so we weren't quite sure what we were going to do this year. This coming spring, we are going to help them out. We are going to be part of it still. Um, we're just going to kind of be less involved. So we're still running that ag specific track, um, but due to feedback we received last year and number wise, because we we tried to go large producer focused, but because of the other tracks, we think it was the wrong. It just it wasn't as appealing to large producer. Yeah, I don't think we um, hit the right community. So we switched it, and we decided that what we want to do instead is we want to try to talk about what what kind of event would large producers come to that would be like an information like kind of like everything else people do like the range beef cow symposium and women in ag and all these other ones you know that people go to that are producer focused um because that that one does not seem to be the right fit no. so we're going we've talked about it and we've decided that we're going to make that our own separate deal um not i don't think we'll have it's we don't have set plans for like, yeah. this coming year but that is in yeah. the works yeah. it is in the work. and um yeah. our surrounding neighbors um, from extension perspective had told us if we do something like that they would be happy to chip in um so it wouldn't because that was the other thing it's just uh, something like that is pretty large scale it's it's larger than uh, you guys are great but we don't want to put it all on you <laughs> and it's larger than what just christine and i can do by ourselves so having that benefit so we just kind of need to put it together and see what what direction they are thinking and things like that so that's more like that three to five year plan yeah. putting it together but it will happen we are constantly still talking about it um so for ag, sun soil water ag, we're talking about looking at more in the urban folks, because that's the folks yeah, who come. That's, that's, the that's the demographic. That's the demographic. Right. So we've yeah. gone more that way. So we've talked about like um like backyard like diversification and soil health when you have vegetables and plant animals all in the same space and height. So things like that of that nature and kind of going more towards that mode, which um like because when we did our survey results, that's what people we're gravitating towards and we're like oh we would love to have like a topic on this and so that's kind of we took we went exactly based off the survey results so yeah. that's kind of what we're going with that so it doesn't mean you guys aren't all welcome to come it'll still be a great event um but it'll be more you're not urban folks. Hosting it. You don't we're not responsible we're not yeah we're just yeah we're just, yeah, just, we're just gonna run that track part of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which which is okay because then we can take some of what we learned there and make it into the really nice producer event so um it's not they a, set a date for that? It is February 27th and 28th, but I'm not mistaken. I thought it was, was 25th, 26th. So yeah. it might be. It's um, the end of February. Yeah. Same day as fruit and veg. Um, same week. Just fruit and veg will be the Tuesday, Wednesday, and then some it will be the Friday, Saturday. Oh, I think it's like 23rd, 24th, something like that. In, in, in February. Yeah. And yeah. that last weekend. Yeah. So. So yeah, so that is so ongoing. You all are invited. Um, it's so, and it will it will be good. I mean, there will be lots of great classes happening for that. Um, so yeah, and then of course, like Women in Ag, in Ag is coming up. The Colorado Ag Water Summit is happening. Those are all next month. Um, the Colorado Food Summit. Yeah. Oh yeah, because it's, it's November now. It's November. <laughs> um, Colorado Food Summit is next month. I think Kennedy, right? I I'm sure you're early probably December. involved. Yeah, I think it's early December. Um. There is the, there's a um, Colorado weed 
management symposium that is actually happening here in Pueblo in December as well. It's like early December as well. Mm -hmm. um, so just, I know for some of you guys, and we're going to push that hard like to the producers because it's happening here in Pueblo, so you don't have to travel for it. Um, the labor conference is also, Colorado for the yeah. Edge is having their labor conference here in Pueblo as well yeah. Yeah. in December. Um, their, the Range Beef Cat Symposium is happening in December as well. That's up north. Um, I don't know. I don't remember the exact location for that one offhand, but that's a combination of Colorado, Mon Wyoming, Montana, Nebraska, and Oklahoma, I believe, if I remember the flyer right. So it's a large variety of ag states focused on range beef cow. So um, there will be like lots of talks. There's over 50 vendors coming to that. So that one's going to be a big one. Um, so yeah, there's there's like a lot of conferences happening in the next two months. So it's conference. It's conference. It's conference, it's conference yeah. yeah. So if you guys are like wanting, if you have travel dollars to spend, or you're like, I really want to go to an ag thing, let us know because we we will fill your calendars up for sure. We have plenty to do. So, um, but yeah. So with that, unless you guys have anything else, um, um, do you know that? And speaking of conferences, um, agroability is having the aging. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know? You're yeah. good. Yeah, that one is in January, mm -hmm. and it will be held here, actually, in this very room. Um, and there will be lunch provided. So um, as that one gets a little closer, we'll send yeah. out more info. So you'll probably see that one. We'll post it next month to yeah. kind of like get folks aware of what's going I on. Have, I have it on our, our um, mm, mail trip. We have a mail trip right now because they, they have uh, winter classes throughout this. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So yeah, so we're slowly getting um, Well, it's really only like to you, but the Annie's project is doing a retreat, um, which is like production and operation focused for women in ag yeah. specifically. Yeah. They're doing a retreat in Grand Junction, um, November like 30th or December 2nd, something like that. But I'll send you the flyer. Yeah. Um, and I, I know Grand Junction is a little far, yeah. but it's not too expensive. And I know you wouldn't use that. I know, I love Annie's so, project. Someday I'll attend it. Yeah. I know when it comes to Pueblo. I'm working on it. Yeah. That's, 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 that's also another one in the works. It's just, it's a huge project. <laughs> yeah. So, but I am a trained facilitator because I did went and do that. So, um, and I, I'm the only one in this part of the our area. little state area. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's another one that we're like looking at long term to bring. try to bring in and and make it where it's not just Pueblo. It's Reason. it's regional. Yeah. Just because there's so many of those. So, um, yeah. So, but that's that was the other one we wanted to let folks know. So, um, cool. Well, awesome. Well, thank you all for being here. Thank you for having lunch with us. Thank you, Kennedy. Yeah, too, and yeah. I know Drew left, but thanks, Kennedy, for being online. We appreciate it. And um, we'll see you all in springtime. Have a great yeah. holiday season. Thank you, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, Kennedy. Bye. Bye. Awesome. You guys are doing great. Thank you. No, we appreciate the feedback and